Huh. I don't know if you could see it, but look behind me. It's beautiful. Now, in front of me are some dark clouds. I don't know if you could see the little raindrops. Just ignore it because I'm going to show you or teach you some truth bombs about lower back pain. Two types. Now, we're omitting emotional problems, we're omitting chemical problems, and we're omitting, hey, organ problems. So if you have a kidney disease and that's what's causing your back pain, just don't even watch this video. All right, so I'm gonna make this short and sweet, but I'm gonna tell you the secret for most mechanical back problems is finding out what positions actually cause the pain and then the exercise, the rehab, the adjustments that you do as a chiropractor are exactly the opposite. So let me give you an example. So you try this at home. Bend backwards, stand up, arch your back backwards. Now what happens if you get pain, particularly on one side or the other, and it radiates into the top of your buttocks or maybe down into your hamstrings? Now the pain generator in that particular situation is a facet. Now what do you do about that? Well, there are many things. The first is, you gotta lose that beer belly. You gotta lose that Milwaukee goiter. You gotta get thinner. You probably are the type of person that has a big old gut, and it's time to do something about it. So that's dietary. Now, what exercises can you do? Number one, I have patients stretch the hip flexors, and then learn how to do lower abdominal planks. And I show this on my YouTube channel. It's on there, just go to the core training section under playlist and it's there. The second thing is you need to not do planks for a minute or three minutes or something like that, don't do that. You wanna do them throughout the day. So what, what does that actually mean? It may mean that you actually, every hour, get down on the ground and do two planks. So on an eight hour day, you may do 16 repetitions, but you did them throughout the day. The goal here is take pressure off the facets long enough for them to stop being inflamed. The second thing is the adjustment needs to be in a flexion posture. If the facet that's bothering you is mainly on the left, let's say, you're gonna lie the patient down on the right side. When you do the adjustment, you will open up the facet only on that left side. Now how do you know it's left or right? It's a little hill coming up, I'll tell you when I'm done with the hill. Okay, so here's how you know. You have the patient, or you do this yourself, you arch backwards, and then you take one hand, let's say your right hand, and you reach down the back of your right thigh. That will tell you if it's the right side, and you will get right-sided pain. If you do the opposite, you run your hand down the left side, that will be left side of the set. And that's how you know, as a chiropractor, which one to adjust. This, for me, personally, usually requires about five to six treatments, give the patient the exercises at home, and guess what? Pretty much totally cured. Now let's say the opposite occurs, that you bend backwards, and oh man, it takes away the pain. But now when you bend forward, as if you're gonna to touch your toes, you actually get pain that goes into your buttocks, down one leg, down into the calf, or behind the knee, as well as into the toes, and the toes start going numb. Totally different situation. That's not a facet, that's very likely a disc problem. Now, how do you deal with that? Again, the principle is do the opposite. Now in this particular case, what I will do is I will show people the McKenzie protocol where they get on, their, on the floor and they do kind of a lazy push-up or a McKenzie and they'll do 10 repetitions about four times a day. The important thing is to teach them to stop stretching their hamstrings. And that is usually the dumbest thing you could do 
with this type of problem. The second thing is that when you do the adjustment to their spine, very, very important that you don't do the same type of adjustment that you do with a facet syndrome. And very often, unfortunately, this requires greater skill. I have tried my best to teach others how to do this. This is a Gonstead style of adjusting. And for whatever reason, maybe it's just I'm an a-hole or something like that, that people just don't want to learn. And so I've had trouble trying to teach other chiropractors how to do this. It's a skill, like hitting a golf ball. You get better at it with time. So the adjustment has to be on the opposite side of their disc problem. So if their disc problem is on the left, you will lie them down on the left. And there's a special way of adjusting into extension, very little rotation with a little bit of lateral bending. And very often, patients will get up off the table with wide eyes and go, oh wow that felt good and they usually say no one's ever done that before and very often with these I will use a class 4 laser but that is how you can differentiate yourself between a disc problem and a facet problem and I just gave you some of the solutions of how to solve them so hey looks like we got lucky it stopped raining so I'm gonna do a little bit more riding. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm gonna put two links of other videos here if you wanna watch them. Thanks for watching me. Thumbs up as always, and subscribe.